my husband and I got the opportunity to go to Barbados this summer. We ended up going in July this year. We flew in to a beautiful Friday. And of course, you know, we have to get a couple silly pictures of us every time. I swear I'm always in that orange jacket. But when we landed, we ended up renting a car through Go Adventure, which was the cheapest one. My husband was very, very skeptical because I am very, very cheap and he thought it would be bad. But we got this awesome, cute little car and it's yellow. I couldn't complain at all. But just so that you know, while you're in Barbados, the driver's side is actually on the right side. So heads up, be prepared for that. It is a lot harder than you think to get used to. You could see that the roads were just as regular as could be, but there was a definitely different scenery. We were on our way to our Airbnb. We do like to book Airbnbs because they're more affordable than renting in a hotel and we're able to get out and about in town and get, really get a feel for the area we're traveling in. So the Airbnb we rented was adorable and it was called Salt Life. It was marked like lots of the houses in the area with a bright color. Ours happened to be this gorgeous blue. And here are a few shots of what it looked like in right off of our back porch. We were in a suite, like a little tiny one bedroom studio off of the back of the home. And there was a seating area back here with a hammock you could get away with. The landscape was definitely professionally done. And right outside of our little tiny room was a seating area if you wanted to eat outside. So here's some pictures of the inside of our room. It was just big enough for us to enjoy. And there was a kitchen and there was a pool it's communal if you see to the right there's actually two levels there was an apartment built on top and apartment on bottom that were also rented through families here's the street right outside our airbnb you could walk up to the end of the road we were in hastings and there's this boardwalk right at the end of the beautiful ocean On our first day, like I said, we got there on Friday, there's this awesome community fish fry called Oystens, and it's held every Friday, like clockwork, and locals come out as well as um, all of the people who are visiting at the time. You can catch right down from the Airbnb that we were at, and pretty much anywhere, a little cab. They don't have Uber drivers here, so you can catch a cab. It was a ton of vendors and booths where you could get uh, your pick of seafood. A lot of times there were long lines, but you didn't have to pick the place with the long lines to enjoy the food. Um, we actually had some sword steak, swordfish steak, and then went to another spot you can see and had a whole new dish just so we could share. But I had to take a moment and get a picture of this guy's tattoos on his legs, like so realistic with Tupac. Like I said before, there's beautiful, colorful homes. This coral one was right down the road from our Salt Life Airbnb, but there were yellow ones, pink ones, all kinds of colors. You'd see colors on the road, colors built into the rock, um, people's paintings. It definitely had a tropical feel. Something for you to know when you're driving, get used to roundabouts. There are roundabouts after roundabouts after roundabouts, and I'll show you just a few instances of our roundabout. Um, adventures I would call them um, but be safe and be careful and make sure you know the rules of the land stay on the outside lane if you're exiting at the first exit and the inside lanes if you're going to the second or third exit 
just a little um, maintenance work for your Barbados trip. If you're staying for a long time, this is a Massey's supermarket. I believe that's how you say it. They look like this inside. Everything is priced very well. You can stock up your kitchen in your Airbnb um, to make it through the week. Another thing to note, there are these trees. They're marked with a red band around them. They're poisonous. The sap on them, if they get on you, it will burn your skin. And also, you're not allowed to bring any camo with you to Barbados. Only their military is allowed to wear camo. So I had to tell my husband, Derek, that you cannot bring one of your favorite wolf pack hats. It's not allowed. And they did ask us when we were entering into Barbados if we had any camo with us. It would be confiscated. But speaking of military, we felt very safe. We had no issues and we also did not actually see any military personnel while we were there. Our next morning, we went to the north point of the island to Animal Flower Cave. So here is a scenery picture. There's lots of places that you can sit, these cool chairs that are kind of like off of cliff. And there is a cafe there as well if you want to stop and eat. But here's some pictures of the inside of the cave. It's very informal. Um, at caves that I've been in the past, you're not allowed to touch anything, not allowed to really um, interact with the nature. But we were able to uh, you know, touch things if we were losing our footing. Um, and we were able to actually swim in the water. You were given that option. I wouldn't recommend small children for this we did have a family that brought their children and they might have been four and six and they did have a little bit of issues going down um, into the cave but we really enjoyed it the water was cold though so heads up that was in july it was still cold because the water comes in through this blowhole um but the reason why they call it the animal flower cave is there are these little tiny life forms that if you poke it with a stick they go and disappear they kind of look like i guess like um sea urchins on a stick see that there it goes um so enjoy yourself there's great seating outside where you can watch the water crashing or ponder why are we here without kids and how amazing it is um, but enjoy the scenery enjoy a little bit of exercise and remember you can also get some food while you're down there we took advantage of this time as well to next go to the sugar mill and that was right down the way not very far maybe like i don't know five miles or so and we were beautiful pictures there was great scenery it was actually down the way from some cows so we went and visited the cow farm but you can see the scenery here and their landscaping and florals were to die for so i could not miss the opportunity to do this dramatic pose in the flowers and my photographer caught every single moment of it then we left and right around the corner from the sugar mill there was this trail So here's the beach that was at the end of our unmarked trail. It was not very, it was not clean. So this is what happens when a beach is not commercially cleaned. All the seaweed gathers up on it. So we didn't get to relax and the water was kind of rough, but here are some pictures from our little excursion. And our little car was definitely dating a run for its money, but we got all these little treasures and we were able to make it through. So here's a little example of what happened to get down there though. This is the way back out. You were way up there. And then we went, yeah. It was a lot more graceful last time. <laughs> oh, this poor little car. Good job. We didn't get stuck. 
So we were able to get some really cool photos on the path, but I warned Derek. I said, I think I saw something moving. I think there are monkeys back there. Good luck. And so I did not join him for this photo op. And here is what we saw when we were leaving our little destination. What's that in the distance? Monkeys. Way out in the distance. So they totally were there. After this, we went to a the other side of the island. So we're working our way from the top back around to the surfer side, which is Bathsheba. It has all of the great surfing available and actually some really great um, finds when it comes to shells, but it is not a swimming area and it is actually kind of difficult to get down there. Coconuts out of the coconut tree. Oh, he got it. Here are some of those beautiful treasures I was talking about earlier that are so easy to find. In memory of this beautiful soul. This very nice memorial on the water. That evening we went out to eat to Nauru, which was right around the corner. It is an Asian restaurant. Um, we actually just walked there. So here's some glam shots from us and inside of the restaurant. Uh, I highly recommend it. it was good. The service was great. We actually had the opportunity to sit with the bartender while we waited to be seated. And the bartender told us that he hadn't had the opportunity to entertain anybody usually he has to bring the food or the drinks to the table or the bar or the waiters waiters do and so he gave us a full out show we saw all of his flame techniques and he also sang with the music and danced with the music that was playing at the time so i'd highly recommend naru if you want something asian Saturday morning, we went to Brighton Market, and that is this one here. It was almost like people just go and do brunch here and meet, and locals go um, and just have great food and sit and enjoy each other. Uh, we did buy from some soaps from Kai as well. And then we went to Holder's Market, which is where we were able to have our first fritters. So you'll see a picture of the fritters here. I ate them, they were very hot, they were very tasty. So I'd recommend you getting them. It's almost like a hush puppy for those of you who know what hush puppies are. We park at the top and you walk down this hill to get to Holder's Market, just a heads up. There's a fresh bread stand. So we got a baguette for later because my Achilles heel is bread and butter. And they have all these quirky little items about like this mirror. And uh, there also was a chicken. So I didn't put a chicken in here, but there was a rooster. Later that day for lunch, we walked down to Lemongrass, which was a little pop-up shop. Um, that was Thai, I believe, and ordered some noodles that were amazing. I mean, like, amazing. I still think about it now that I've been home. Um, you can get some curry and rice as well. That's what Derek got, but he was very much wanting my noodles instead. It was what we saw it on our way back from Oyston's on Friday and said that we would go back. So this was what we did for lunch on Sunday. And then... We went to St. Nicholas's Abbey. This was something we liked to kind of relax on our last days. We didn't expect it to be so great. It was actually about to close when we got there, so we only got to spend 30 minutes to an hour. You can spend so much more time there. There's a little uh, train that goes by, and you can ride the train through the whole property. It's beautifully manicured, and they make their own rum. Yeah, 
and you get a free tasting with your ticket. So we're not much on drinking, but of course I gave it a go with their rum punch, which you can get like at any place. You can get rum punch if you're big on that. But there is some history. We actually even got to see rum being made as well. So here's some samples and we saw a few of the ladies packaging it and sending it out. Can you believe that it's hand packaged? We also toured some of their um, agriculture facilities, and we met this gentleman named Peter who was um, getting the rust off of some antique lanterns who was so insightful and so helpful. He even said next time that we're in town that we should come to his house, which is right down from um, St. Nicholas Abbey, and he would like to get like have his family and his wife together to have dinner. And he inf and told us that we should keep going, and this is where we saw this giant um, empty windmill. What do you use on your hair? On your hair? Our last day, we got to enjoy um, snorkeling, which will, I will highly recommend. We did it without a tour guide and just off of the coast of, um, it's called, well, the locals call it Browns Beach. And Derek wanted to practice using his gear in the pool at the um, Airbnb. So I, of course, decided that I wanted to record just in case something interesting or maybe dangerous or if I would have to explain to the um, doctor's office in the emergency room what happened to my husband. But here's where we went and spent some time and we went back the next morning and actually went snorkeling by ourselves at like nine in the morning. We drove to uh, what I guess would be called downtown and parked our car in a parking deck, but most things were closed this day. We got the opportunity to go to Agape, which is a chocolate, uh, I guess a chocolatier or cotillier, I'm not even sure. But this is award-winning chocolate, gourmet, and the engineer who invented it, his name is Derek, just like my Derek engineer. So I'd recommend you popping by to taste something that you never had before. We also went to dinner that night at Tapas, which was pretty snazzy. They sat us up top, which was so nice because there was a bottom, but the top had a great view of the ocean. We had delicious like home cooked food. I had a lamb um, and then we had uh, this like potato-y thing. I wish I knew the name. I'll have to try to find that later, but we got snazzied up for that experience. All right, give me your top three favorite things about Barbados three. so far because we still got another day. Well, I like that you can kind of get lost if, as long as you rent a car and it's kind of rugged, almost like when we were in Hawaii and you could just go places and Puerto Rico. So that's similar. But it's definitely car. Friendly if you're adventurous and daring because it's a whole nother adventure being in the car. But you can get across the island in like an hour so you can see all the parts. Um, I like the water is super clear. Like Derek mentioned, it was like bath water. And the sunsets are so pretty sitting in the water. And it's not too busy, at least this time of year. It's the beaches aren't full and there's beach everywhere so I also liked our Airbnb Salt Life Cottage look it up it was perfect it's just the right size the other people renting near us were really nice it's clean and modern and it's in an area that no one ever talked about which is Hastings and Hastings is so close to really nice waterfront restaurants and not too far away from everywhere else that you need to go, like Oysters and Bridgetown. Those are my three things. Sunset might have made it four. Sunset did make it four, yeah. Any more questions? 
No way. One more question. Speak loudly. How did you get such beautiful eyes? I get it from my mama. Okay. Okay, that's the end of your interview. Thank you. Like mentioned in the video, the views are amazing from all of the waterfront and people take advantage of walking that long, long boardwalk and enjoying the scenery. Um, the weather is great and we actually didn't run into any issues with like bugs outside. So go out.